Yes, good day. My name is David Archer, and the name of this topic is the end. What does it mean? We will look into the Bible on the subject and try to find out the true meaning of the end and what does it mean. Now, thanks again for watching. I hope everyone find this uh, video and this information informative and productive. Now, the end, what does it mean? When you hear the words, the end is near, what comes to mind? Do we think of a wild-eyed preacher thundering from the pulpit and gesturing dramatically, Bible in hand? Or do you picture a braided old man standing on a street corner, wearing a long robe, tied at the waist with a robe, rope, holding a sign bearing a doomsday message? Imagining such scenes may make some people feel concerned while others may feel skeptical or even amused. The Bible does say, though, the end will come, Matthew 24, 14 states, and the good news of the kingdom will be preached in all the inhabited earth for witness to all the nations, and then the end will come. The same event is also called the great day of God, Armageddon, Revelation 16, 14, and 16. True. There was such religious confusion on the subject and strange gloomy notions abound. Nonetheless, the Bible itself is clear about the end, revealing what it is or what it is not. God's word also helps us to see clearly whether the end is near. But best of all, it teaches how to, us how to survive. For us though, let us clear up some misconceptions and establish a definition. What does the end really mean according to the Bible? What the end is not. The end is not an epic flaming destruction of the earth. The Bible says God has established the earth on its foundation. It will not be moved from its place forever and ever. Psalms 1 of 4, 5. That scripture and others assures us that God will never destroy the earth nor allow it, allow it to be destroyed ever. Ezekiel 1 4 say, A generation is going and a generation is coming, but the earth remains forever. And Isaiah 45 80 says, For this is what Jehovah says, the creator of the heavens, the true God, the one who formed the earth. It's maker who formally established it. Who did not create it simply for nothing, but formed it to be inhabited. I am Jehovah and there is no one else. The end is not a random, unscheduled event. The Bible reveals that the end is scheduled. God has set a specific time for it. We read concerning that day of, or that hour, nobody knows. Neither the angels in heaven, nor, e nor even the Son, Jesus Christ, but only the Father. Now keep looking, keep awake, for you do not know when the appointed time is near. Mark 13, 32, and 33. Clearly, God the Father has scheduled the exact appointed time, and he will initiate the end. The end is not triggered by humans or by debris or into space. What will bring about the end? Revelation 19.11 says, I saw heaven open and look, a white horse, and the one seated in it is called Faithful and True, and he judges and carries on war in righteousness. Revelation 19 11 to 21 brings it out. Now, too much of the language here is symbolic. We can readily discern this much. God will send an angel an army of angelic creatures to exterminate his enemies. The Bible message about the end is a good news rather than bad. What is the end? Is what is the end? Then the fallen human governments or, or failing human governments. The Bible explains the God of heaven will set up a kingdom, which is a government, 
that will never be destroyed. This kingdom will not be passed on to any other people. It will crush and put an end to all these kingdoms, and it alone will stand forever, Daniel 2.44. As was stated earlier in point 3, there will be an extermination of the kings of the earth and the armies who will have gathered together to wage war against the one sitting on the horse and it against his army, Revelation 19.19. 19. The end of war, violence, and injustice. God is bringing an end to wars through the earth, Psalms 46, 9. He's bringing an end to wars through the earth. He breaks a bow and shatters with spear. He burns the military wagons with fire. Only the upright will be residing in the earth. The blameless will remain in it. And for the wicked, they will be cut off from the earth. And the treacherous will be torn away from it. Proverbs 2, 21 and 22. Look, I'm making all things new, according to Revelation 21, 4 and 5. And let's read, and he will wipe out every tear, he God, will wipe out every tear from the eyes, and death will be no more. Neither will mourning, nor outcry, nor pain be any more. The former things have passed away. And the one seated on the throne said, Look, I'm making all things new. Also he says, Right, for these words are faithful and true. Then of religions that have failed God and humans. The prophets prophesies the prophet's prophet prophecy lies and the priests dominated by their own authority. But what will you what will you do when the end comes? Jeremiah 5, 31 states. Many will say to me in that day, God, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name and expel demons in your name, demons in your name, perform many powerful works in your name? And then I will declare to them, I never know you. Get away from me, you workers of lawlessness. The end of people who perpetuate and support the current state of affairs Jesus Christ said, no, this is a basis for judgment that the light has come into the world. The men have loved the darkness rather than the light, for their works were wicked. John 3, 19. The Bible describes an earlier worldwide destruction during the time of the faithful man Noah. The world at that time suffered destruction when it was flooded with water. Now by the same word that heavens and the order that now exists are reserved for fire and are being kept until the day of judgment and destruction of ungodly people. 2 Peter 2 people, 3, 5 to 7. Note the oncoming day of Jehovah of judgment and destruction is compared with the destruction of the world of Noah's time. What world was destroyed? Our planet survived. It was the ungodly people, God's enemies, who suffered destruction. During God's upcoming judgment, day of judgment, those who choose to be God's enemy will likewise be destroyed. But God's friends will be reserved as well Noah and his family. Matthew 24, 37, 42. Imagine how splendid the earth will be after God eliminates all wicked influences. Clearly, the Bible message about the end is about is good news rather than bad. Still, you may wonder, does the Bible tell us when the end will come? Would it, could it be near? How can I survive it? After the end, what will it be like after the end? Many scriptures describe what, that wonderful at time. For example, God will wipe out every tear from the eyes, and death will be no more. Neither will mourning, nor outcry, nor pain be any more. The former things have passed away. The one seated on the throne said, look, I'm making all things new, too. Revelation 21, 4, 5. The end doesn't have to mean the end of your life. God wants us to survive, and he tell us, tells us how. The end is near. Now let God, will God let humans continue to dominate one another and threaten the future of the mankind? No. As you have seen, he will step in and bring an end to centuries of misery and oppression. The creator of humans, and the earth wants 
you to know that his time take action is approaching. How does he reveal that vital knowledge? Consider this illustration. When you travel by car, you might first consult online sources, maps, and written directions. Then as you, then as you see signs and landmarks that match up what the directions say, you gain confidence that you are nearing your destination. In a similar way, God has given us his word, which describes striking global trends. As we see these landmarks immensely unfolding, we, come, we become convinced that we are at a time period leading up to the end. The Bible explains that world history will reach a unique, pivotal time period that will cu culminate in the end. That time will see a combination of worldwide events and circumstances that differ from anything in mankind's history. Consider some of the future men features mentioned in God's word. Worldwide upheaval. A prophecy recorded in Matthew 24 lists events in the world that will make up a positive sign. The sign will mark the conclusion of the system of things and lead to the time when the end will come, verses 3 and 14. These features include major war, wars, food shortages, earthquakes in one place after another, an increase of lawlessness, a lack of love, and a sly effort by religious leaders to mislead people, verses 6 to 26. Of course, to some extent, such events have been taking place for centuries. However, as the end approaches, they will all occur in the same trouble era. They will also accompany the next three warning signs. Number two, the attitudes of people. The Bible says that the last day, the time period leading to the end, will be marked by major deterioration of people's attitude. We read men will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boastful, haughty, blasphemers disobedient appearance, unthankful, disloyal, having no natural affection, not open to any agreement, slanderers, without self-control, without love of goodness, betrayers, headstrong, puffed up with pride, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God, 2 Timothy 3, 1 to 4. True, disrespect on fellow humans is not new, but only in the last day would that spirit reach such extremes that air will rightly be described as critical times hard to deal with. Have you noticed this, this ugly downward trend in people's attitude? The earth is being ruined, number three. The Bible says that God brings to ruin those ruining the earth, Revelation 11, 18. In what ways will people be ruining the earth? The time period when Noah lived was described in a similar way. The earth had become ruined in the sight of the true God. And the earth was filled with violence. Yes, God looked upon the earth and its ruin. So God set up that corrupt society and bringing them to ruin. Genesis 6, 13 to 11. Have you noticed the mountain evidence that the earth is becoming filled with violence? Additionally, humans have arrived at a unique point in history. They have the potential literally to ruin the earth. And it was rain, so God said of the corrupt society, I'm bringing them to Rome. Have you? Now humans have arrived in a new point in history. They have the potential literally to rule the earth by wiping out all human life on it. They have the weaponry in hands. And the earth is being ruled in another way. The system that, that support life on earth. The air we breathe, the animal and plants, ecosystems and oceans are steadily being degraded because of human mismanagement. Thank you for another day and for listening. Hope.